Rear Admiral Rick Buchanan. Uh, um, I uh, served from, uh, graduated from the Naval Academy in June of 1968 and served from uh, June of 68 through uh, May of uh, 1999. I uh, chose to enter the Naval Academy as my um, uh, commissioning source and um, I was in high school in uh, Villanova, Pennsylvania and uh, enjoyed uh, all of what the, the Navy represented that I had been exposed to while I was in high school. Um, my dad had served as a yeoman in World War II and uh, he um, was enthusiastic about uh, his time in the Navy even though it was uh, really not combat oriented, but it was limited to uh, some uh, shore duty uh, activities throughout the World War II period. Okay. And um, uh, he had encouraged me to take a look at uh, the Naval Academy as a, uh, as a source of uh, education and uh, military training. Um, and so uh, I uh, applied and uh, was accepted and uh, started that particular training program in June of uh, 1964. So for the four years that uh, followed that particular um, experience, I uh, had the pleasure of going through uh, the Naval Academy, which for the first year was uh, probably not a pleasurable experience. The, being a plebe at the Naval Academy is um, a time of transition. Okay. It uh, really is intended to take individuals from uh, their status as civilians and uh, make them appreciate the importance of uh, understanding responsibility as a, as a military person, um, understanding how to follow orders, uh, understanding the importance of being a teammate and a shipmate and uh, the necessity of being able to help individuals who might be struggling get through some of the uh, tough times that they might experience. And um, those tough times could be in military training, they could be in athletics, or they could be in academics. And, uh, all of that is, is something that you uh, experience when you go to the Naval Academy and when you um, go through that particular process of making the transition into a, uh, into a military environment. Um, back in the years when I was doing it in the 60s, uh, there was a uh, lot more uh, activities that uh, were probably uh, on the margin as far as being appropriate, but um, uh, you, uh, you ended up having to uh, to put your, push yourself through some of those activities and uh, whether it was doing uh, push-ups on a regular basis or reciting, reciting all of the uh, stuff you had to memorize about the, uh, the rates that you uh, had to be able to uh, spit out when an upperclassman asked you for them and then if you didn't have them uh, immediately at your disposal and uh, the upperclassman gave you a come around so that you'd have to go around to his room and uh, and comply with his orders to, uh, to do the things that he wanted you to do. And uh, you'd do crazy things like uh, uh, if he said, well, would you like to hang around my shower? You know, that meant, you know, you had to grab hold of the shower rod and hang from the shower rod for a period of time. So, I mean, you know, all of that kind of stuff is, uh, is the sort of stuff that... Uh, crazy things that you go through that you say to yourself, is this, uh, is this really appropriate, really necessary? But the reality is that it's all part of uh, giving you the training you need to gain the self-confidence that you can take care of yourself and, uh, and right. that you can do it uh, with your shipmates as well. So that's, that's all part of what the, mm -hmm. uh, that naval experience really represents. I think we have made great progress in uh, uh, building uh, a much more professional way of approaching those kinds of situations now and uh, the experience that people go through in whatever uh, place that they go through their commissioning training is, uh, is probably uh, uh, done in a more appropriate fashion, but it's still tough. Right. I mean, the intent is that it's uh, supposed to be tough, that it's supposed to be demanding, that it's supposed to challenge you, and uh, when you have accomplished it, you can feel like you've achieved something that uh, makes you proud of the experience that you've had. So that's what it's all about. Right. Um, of course, uh, there's any number of different sources that uh, people can uh, go through to uh, to achieve a, a commission in the in the Navy, and uh, um, having the opportunity to go to the Naval Academy certainly was a uh, was a pleasure for me. And uh, we had a uh, uh, a great class. I was fortunate uh, to have the opportunity to serve in submarines as I uh, 
prepared for my commissioning. And um, of course, being in submarines at that time, uh, nuclear submarines were uh, literally only about uh, 12 or 13 years old at that particular point. So uh, there was still a lot of um, uh, uncertainty about uh, uh, what nuclear submarines' mission would be, and there was uh, still a lot of things that were being developed and improved associated with uh, uh, with nuclear power you know, on our Navy platforms and uh, uh, with the safety associated with submarines. There was still also in our inventory at that time a lot of diesel submarines. So um, I chose to, uh, to go into the nuclear submarine force and uh, I had never been to sea on a nuclear submarine. The only submarine I had ever seen was uh, visiting a diesel submarine that was tied up in Annapolis uh, alongside the pier. And so it was uh, quite an interesting uh, uh, decision-making process when you come right down to it. And of course, I was, uh, um, you could either call it privileged or uh, challenged to go through the process of being uh, interviewed by uh, Admiral Rickover during that particular uh, uh, selection process. And uh, as many of the interviews were that uh, Admiral Rickover conducted with the candidates for nuclear power training, uh, it was uh, short, measured in seconds as opposed to uh, minutes or uh, hours, but uh, he, he challenged me and said, why aren't you uh, getting good or better grades? Why, are, why aren't your grades improving? And of course, uh, so the, one of the things that uh, was always expected was that uh, if, if he asked you that and you told him that you were going to improve your grades and then you didn't improve your grades, you were going to be uh, held uh, accountable right. for, your, uh, for your comment that you make. But uh, fortunately, he accepted me into the nuclear power program and I was able to uh, then prepare for that particular training uh, process subsequent to my, uh, to my graduation from the Naval Academy. So um, upon graduation, I spent a couple of months at the Naval Academy going participating in the plebe summer training program for, uh, as a commissioned officer. Okay. So um, it was an interesting experience to see the other side of the equation from what I had experienced when I was uh, going th as a midshipman going through plebe summer. Um, and then I went through nuclear power school and uh, nuclear power prototype training, which was a year-long period that uh, uh, took uh, individuals from the beginning of that uh, academic curriculum through to completion of qualification as an engineering officer to watch in a land-based uh, nuclear reactor. Okay. And um, this was part of the program that uh, Admiral Rickover and the Naval Reactors Organization had established as a way of ensuring that the individuals who received that training were capable of completing the training and uh, establishing their uh, uh, skills such that they could uh, qualify as a engineering officer to watch on a uh, on a land-based reactor, and um, that prepared them then to do a similar qualification on a sea-based uh, submarine or carrier or cruiser, which at that time were the three kinds of ships on which we had nuclear uh, reactors. Um, upon completion of that. Uh, 12 months of training in nuclear power, I then had the opportunity to go to submarine school and I spent um, eight weeks going through uh, submarine uh, officer uh, training and uh, did that in Groton, Connecticut at the submarine base um, uh, in Connecticut. And during that particular period, they introduced us to the fundamentals of what submarine operations really represented.